if you have a sales team, chances are there's a whole bunch of different challenges you're likely facing in your business right now. But in all the sales teams that I've run over the past 15 years, there's really been a couple of common things that uh, if I look back on the ones that we maybe were not as successful as we wanted to be, really boiled down to two very simple reasons uh, that I believe that our sales team did not scale to the level I thought it was going to or that we had plans to. First thing that I would write down is that we should make all of our activities automatic and transparent. And when I say activities, I mean everything that a sales rep is meant to do, whether it's email follow-up, SMS follow-up, phone call follow-up, video marketing follow-up, however they're following up with your leads, we need to make every single process we have automatic and transparent. And let me give you a really uh, specific example. If you have sales reps that are using a CRM, hopefully you're using a CRM, HubSpot, Salesforce, Keep, whatever, and they're making phone calls, if they're making phone calls with their cell phone, then uh, you can't track that, right? Now, you could say, well, sure, we track that. They add a note in the CRM and they they tag it and they type everything out. But anytime we make anything manual, there's always going to be dap gaps or daps, gaps in data uh, that we have to count for, right? So you could have a sales rep that's amazing on the phone that's probably 70% accurate in updating the CRM and the data is gonna be pointless because you don't know the 30% if that was good or bad. So we can't look at that data. So if they're making phone calls or they're sending SMSs, that should be handled through a phone system. Uh, the bunch that we use, we use uh, AirCall, we've used JustCall, TurboDial we've used before, depending on the CRM that you guys have. Uh, there's a lot of them out there that are really good, but every time that any rep makes a phone call, sends an, SM uh, an SMS or a phone call that comes in, everything's automatically tracked. When they get done with the call, they click a button and, and the button says, what happened after the call? Did you set an appointment? Do you need to follow up? Is it a long-term nurture? Was it bad info? Or did they tell you to go pound sand? You know, it's very simple. So by them just doing the activity, tracking is built in. I remember a very early real estate team we ran, uh, all of our inside salespeople had a little one sheet piece of paper where they'd have to do all these little things like circle and square and highlight and cross off. And it was great because they had something tangible at the end of the day that said, this is what you did with your time. But again, if they only did that four days a week, we can't look at the data because we're 20% off right now. And we don't know if that 20% off again, was it great? Was it bad? Did it happen at all? Uh, we have no idea. So the data literally is worth nothing to us in those instances. So if you've got a sales team right now and they're following up on prospects or inbound registrations, or maybe they're outbound cold calling, whatever they're doing, the more manual you make the process, the harder it is for you to diagnose where the sales team is falling apart. You don't know if it's the words they're saying, if it's the number of calls they're making. I know uh, there was an agent that I coach, a very successful agent now. Um, I coached him in his early days in the real estate career. This is going back well over 10 years ago. And he was making his calls. We weren't using any technology. It was all through his cell phone and maybe like an automatic dialer. And uh, it just doesn't working. So the things that I kept hearing on the coaching call was, this doesn't work in my market. There's not enough of these to call. Nobody answers their phone. Like we had all these reasons as to why we thought it wasn't working. But it was once that we started recording the calls automatically and we started to inspect random scripts and boil down to one problem that this agent had. It's that he literally just wasn't asking for the appointment. He was asking all the right questions. He was having uh, really good conversations. You know, he was getting very little rejection on the phone, but nobody wanted to meet. And at the end of the day, when we listened to some of the recordings, the suggestion came up of, hey, what would happen if you just asked this simple question at the end of the call, whether you felt comfortable or not? And I remember him saying something to the effect of, sure, but if they want to work with me, they're going to tell me. And I don't necessarily disagree with that, right? Because when you are in a lot of rapport and things are jiving, like both people want to take the next step. But in his case, everybody that he was calling, nobody was expecting his call at that time. Nobody was expecting to talk about real estate. So I don't know that they were going to volunteer that information. So the next week goes by, we record the calls again. He focuses on asking the closing question. We call it the transitional question if you guys are in any of our uh, coursework. But he gets to his transition question. Um, he nails it. He gets to the close. First person agrees to an appointment. Gets to the next call. Gets to the transition question. Gets to the close. They didn't convert. They, they said no. But here's the interesting thing. If you made sales calls right now, if you're making sales calls right now, or you're doing email follow-up or however you do whatever you do, when you ask for the close, when you ask for somebody to commit to a piece of business with you, the safety in that question gives you clarity, meaning everybody could say no, but at least at the end of the call, you know the answer is no. And, and maybe in your business, that means more follow-up. Maybe in your business, that means you don't follow up. But either which way, 
you now know the action plan of how to go forward. If they say yes, you know how to execute on the appointment. But all of the stress in sales is not actually in making the calls. I believe it's in all of the what do I do next actions after we make all these sales calls that we really just don't know what to do, right? Asking the closing question solves all of that, right? We were only able to get to that conclusion because tracking was transparent and automatic. Um, he, we never would have come to that conclusion had we've just had dialogue back and forth based on what's happening because the human brain can only reference so many details in the past, right? We know the big things, we know the happy things, we know the angry things, but the, the in the middle, we just tend to forget, right? Uh, so everything that you're doing right now, if you're growing a sales team and if it's, it's not working or maybe it's not growing as fast or maybe you're not hitting the numbers or the conversion isn't where it needs to be, the first thing that I would look at right now before we change anything is make the activities transparent and automatic. Uh, if you have any questions on this or you'd like my help building this for your specific company or maybe you just wanna consult for a couple minutes to see what that may look like, I'm sure there's gonna be a link below the video for you to schedule a quick call with me. Trust me when I tell you, if you remove all of the manual labor off your sales team, they can run at a pace probably uh, previously thought not to be able to uh, happen. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think you get the gist of it, right? Any questions, let me know. Transparent, automatic, I'll see you tomorrow.